when her back window was smashed. A couple of hundred people can be seen in this video gathered around the intersection of Austell Road and County Services in Cobb County. You can hear engines roaring and tires squealing. This is what a woman driving down the road came upon in the early hours of Sunday morning. Cars everywhere, everywhere, spinning, driving. She took out her phone and recorded what was happening. She even saw smoke rise up from a fire in the middle of the cars. She says a man approached her. He said, well, what you trying to do? And I said, well, I'm trying to get to my kids. Can I go through? Can I go around? Next thing she knew, she heard a loud boom. And I jumped out my car. Once I jumped out my car, I it was like 50 people surrounding my car and they backed up and there was a hole in my window she thought someone had shot her car and called police when the police arrived they searched my car and found a big rock sitting between my two car seats say that same night street racers gathered at the intersection of Canton Road and Liberty Hill more tire marks a man reported to police his car was destroyed he had two small children with him in his vehicle that's bad that it happened to them again I just wish it was something saying stay put we will get to you when we can the Gulf Coast rocked Sunday by 150 mile per hour winds as Hurricane Ida came ashore as a Category 4. Louisiana, the state that is no stranger to hurricanes, now bracing for one of its toughest tests yet. If you had to draw up uh, the worst possible path for a hurricane in Louisiana, it would be something very, very close to what we're seeing. Residents have been warned to shelter in place and stay off the roads, as it could be a while before first responders are able to reach those who need help. The storm growing in intensity so quickly that New Orleans had no time to organize a full evacuation. Those who've stuck around now have no choice but to ride it out. We were slightly blindsided because we came from out of town and just checking the weather, it just tells you that it's going to be raining. But it didn't say anything about a hurricane. Hundreds of thousands have already lost power, and it could be weeks until it's fully restored. The New Orleans levee system, rebuilt and improved after Katrina, now faced with holding back a life-threatening storm surge. Will it be tested? Yes. Uh, but it was built for this moment. Officials here say they are very confident in the levy system. $14.5 billion has been pumped into the levees and the pumping systems since Hurricane Katrina 16 years ago. What they cannot control, though, is the rain falling directly into the city, perhaps upwards of two feet. That is going to turn this bowl of a city into a flooding center. All throughout Louisiana, they're facing flooding, but in here in New Orleans, below sea level, it's a huge worry. Deidre? Caroline Shiloh. Katrina leaving tremendous damage across the region and more than a million people without power. And now the remnants of the storm are heading straight to North Georgia. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Tom Haynes. I'm Courtney Bryant. I'm he produced a weapon and actuated the slide as if he was getting ready to shoot that weapon. Atlanta police say they were responding to a call of a suicidal man with a gun in a neighborhood on Georgia Tech's campus before 3 p.m. on Sunday afternoon. The units began to uh, set up a command post so that we could begin the process of making contact with the victim to see if we could really and truly de-escalate the situation. Unfortunately, prior to us getting all resources in place, he began to uh, leave the scene, at which point in time units came in to uh, street when they shot him. Medics rushed him to the hospital where he died. Investigators said the man was in his 40s. They don't think he lived in the neighborhood or went to Georgia Tech. Roswell police are also involved in the incident, but APD didn't say how. Earlier in the day, about a mile up the road, an officer shot a man in Midtown who police said was wielding a metal pipe. That this man uh, was hitting cars and had, had actually struck another individual uh, before the officer got involved. That's when police say an officer jumped out of his car and tried to intervene around 5.45 a.m. The officer deployed his taser, uh, which had a negative effect, and then the officer transitioned to his service weapon where he discharged his weapon. 
That suspect was rushed to Grady, and as far as we know, he did survive. Two men Atlanta police shot because they allegedly had weapons less than 12 hours apart. Our hearts always go out to the individuals that we have contact with. Unfortunately, we have a note to uh, move forward and uh, do the best that we can do to protect our community. We do know in the first shooting this morning, the officer was wearing a body camera and it was recording. It's not clear if this second shooting was captured on officer's body camera video. Regardless, the GBI will be looking at all of the footage available. On Tex Campus, Rob DiRienzo, Fox 5 News. The hospitals have been overwhelmed with people coming to the emergency rooms. And in fact, if you look at our, our um, surveillance data that just looks at emergency room visits, we have just huge spikes, the highest, frankly, that we've ever seen reported in emergency room uh, visits related to respiratory um, illness, un unknown origin, because we don't get definitive diagnosis, it's just the symptoms as, as they come in. Um, the, for, for sick individuals, that is really important, but some people were coming to emergency rooms just to get tested or mildly ill and, and just wanted to go someplace where they could get a test quickly, um, easily, and, and, and perhaps were worried about um, you know, the, the cost of it. I, that is why we made a commitment to set up testing sites adjacent to hospitals throughout the state to ensure that we could offload the, the hospitals uh, with our testing sites and uh, make sure that we had easy access to testing throughout the state to make it um, much easier and simpler for everyone to get tested. I mean, we have a, here in Metro Atlanta, we have a lot of places to get tested, commercial and otherwise, but, th but in all parts of the state, you don't have that. And, and it, we, so we wanted to make sure we had that availability everywhere, and particularly to offload the hospitals that had so many people in their emergency rooms spilling out, um, waiting to be seen with serious ills, not just COVID, but other conditions too, because trauma and heart attacks and um, strokes continue to happen even as we're fighting COVID. And I, I think it was uh, the right thing to do. I think it was the proactive thing to do. And I uh, talked about it in a number of interviews uh, prior to that uh, press release going out. Thank you. Rate at 12,223. She also said 159 counties, all 100 counties in Georgia are in the red zone, meaning that the Delta variant is highly transmissible in all 159 counties here and that cases in children have quadrupled. Uh, we're going to have more coverage on what happened here with this press conference and have a report from the state capitol with those details, but just wanted to give you that update as we got them from the governor and Dr. Toomey. You can get all the information, of course, on our website, fox5atlanta.com. Until then, we will go back to regular programming with Judge Judy, and we'll see you back here at 4 o'clock. This is a common sight in Atlanta. Sleeping on the sidewalks and doorways all over the city. Ladder, eight firefighters should be working out of here, but not right now. It's been shut down temporarily. Let me tell you the real tragedy. St. Anne's Terrace is right down St. Anne's Lane, which is across from the fire station. Atlanta Firehouse 26 is literally a football field away from a senior home. No amount of juggling by fire commanders to bring engines from other areas could replace the response Company 26 firefighters can make to an emergency at the home. I used to live there. We had two fires during the two years I was there. They were put out in, inside with, with our staff, but it was very dangerous. And then the fire trucks also come with people have heart attacks, etc. That's a real tragedy not to have them that close to a senior place. Optimal, even adequate citywide coverage is an ongoing problem that shows signs of getting worse before any turnaround and residents who may have confidence in the highly trained Atlanta fire personnel would see that confidence shaken if they knew what Atlanta Councilman Dustin Hillis knows and has been fighting to try to correct.